Okay, hey there guys, and welcome to this video where we're gonna be speaking a bit about alcohols. Right, so you need to know the functional group, which basically defines an alcohol as a group of hydrocarbons. You also need to know how we produce ethanol, right? And you also need to know the uses of ethanol, why it's useful, and the uses of other alcohols. Okay, you also need to be able to talk about the reactions of different alcohols, and that includes reactions with oxidizing agents, includes reactions with sodium, and with oxygen. And finally, you need to be able to construct a complete combustion chemical equation for any given alcohol. All right, so let's dive right in straight away. All right then, so what is an alcohol? Well, an alcohol must have the OH functional group, right? And that obviously means an oxygen and a hydrogen, right? That is in place of a hydrogen uh, from a generic hydrocarbon. We'll have a look at that in a second. Okay, alcohols are named with the OL suffix on the end, right? So for example, methanol, ethanol, right, etc. The first four alcohols are methanol, ethanol, propanol, and butanol, right? You need to be able to name those. The ones after that will be named for you. So let's have a look at the displayed formula of these guys. So methanol, which contains one carbon, right, looks like this. You see how one of the hydrogens has been swapped for an OH, like so. Ethanol. Ethanol has two carbons, uh, and so in exactly the same way, one of the hydrogens has been swapped for an OH group. So those are both alcohols. You could obviously draw butanol, which is four carbons. You could obviously draw propanol, which is three carbons, uh, in exactly the same way. Right, now, we also need to be able to write the structural formula. Okay, so in blue, this is actually called, let me just write it down, this is actually called the structural formula, right, whereas these guys are called the displayed formula. Okay, so when you draw it out, that's the displayed formula because you're displaying the molecule. The structural formula basically tells you the structure but without actually drawing it. So CH3, right, because you've got carbon with three hydrogens and then OH. Here you've got CH3, so here, then CH2, and then the OH. And so that's what the structural formula looks like. The molecular formula, okay, is sometimes a little bit more hazy because for the molecular formula, I could write CH, oh, sorry, CH4, O, because it's just the number of each atoms that you have. This is actually the correct uh, molecular formula. However, and this is a big however, it now, by the looks of things, you don't know that it's an alcohol. It could be something else, right? And so often what you do with the molecular formula is you basically simplify everything that's not the OH, but then you write OH as well, right? With methanol, that didn't make a difference, but what about with ethanol? Well, with ethanol, that, this would actually be C2... H6O as the molecular formula. Now, this isn't really clear that it's an alcohol either. Okay, but what about if I were to just simplify that as a molecular formula, simplify this part, but still have the OH, that would be C2H5OH. Now, this is how you normally see things written uh, in order to save time, but to still specify that it is, in fact, an alcohol. And so that's kind of a hybrid between structural formula and molecular formula. I just wanted to make you aware of that. Okay, so ethanol. This one is important. You will have heard of it before because ethanol is very important for us. It's, what, it's the, actually the alcohol found in alcoholic drinks, right? That is ethanol. Okay, we don't want to use methanol, for example, because you go blind. You don't want to use any other alcohol. Ethanol is one which is safe to drink if you're old enough. If you're watching this video, you're probably not old enough, so don't use this as an excuse to go and start drinking, right? Okay, we also use it for other things such as fuels, uh, solvents, right? We dissolve things in, in alcohol such as ethanol. You can burn uh, ethanol in order to produce energy. That's why we use it as a, as a fuel. And it's also used as a reagent to produce other chemicals, right? And now there, now, there are two ways that we can produce ethanol in general, right? The first is fermentation. Now, fermentation is basically uh, using yeast, right? So it's using yeast and plants can do it as well, right? Plants can do it as well. What it actually is, if you think as a crossover to biology, is anaerobic respiration, right? I'm going to put it up here as an aside. It's actually anaerobic, oh, the rain's really coming down. Sorry if you can hear that. Anaerobic respiration, Okay, and so basically what it is, is it's sugar, right, 
in the yeast forms uh, ethanol and CO2 and CO2, carbon dioxide, right? In particular, it's actually glucose is your sugar, right? Forms ethanol and carbon dioxide. But it's actually the living thing, yeast, which is carrying out that process. And so this is generally carried out at about 30 degrees Celsius, right? Because if you carry this out really hot, then you're going to kill the yeast or the plants or whatever it is that's doing it, right? Industrially, we generally use yeast. Now, the other way is distillation. Right, distillation. This allows us to produce a higher yield. Right, so I'm going to just write this down. This allows us to reach a higher yield of ethanol. Right, why is that important? Because for things like fuels and for things like solvents using ethanol, you want it to be really, really pure and you want to get a load of it. Yeah, um, fermentation does not do that. Fermentation cannot produce alcohol of a high purity right that's great for us if we're making things like beer and wine it's not so great for us if we want to make white spirit which is about 99 or 100 percent ethanol yeah it can fermentation will only produce like between between three percent and 15 percent or something like that right and so if you want to produce a pure ethanol then you use distillation you don't use fermentation okay however that is a chemical process uh it's an industrial chemical process the conditions required are more drastic, right? You need a high temperature, high pressure, and so that is different. Okay, so moving on, boom, combustion, right? As you can tell from this lovely diagram of this guy's death. Now, combustion, as you well know, because I've made a separate video on it, if you don't remember, go and have a look at that, is the complete reaction in alcohol, right? It's burning something in uh, in alcohol, in oxygen. It's burning something in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Complete combustion means you will produce carbon dioxide. Incomplete combustion will mean you can produce something else. But you need to be able to balance this in the same way as you would any other combustion equation. But be very careful. Let me show you. So if I'm balancing this, then first I'm going to balance the carbons. Well, I have three carbons here and one over here. So I need to put a three in front of that. Then I balance the hydrogens. Now, how many hydrogens do I have on the left-hand side? Seven, eight, right? Make sure you don't forget the OH hydrogen. That is eight, which means I need four of these. Okay, now also be careful. I'm balancing the oxygens. How many oxygens do I have on the right-hand side? Well, three times two here makes six, plus four times one makes four. I have 10 oxygens on the right hand side. How many do I have on the left? Well, I don't just put a five in front of the O2 because I have one here, right? So it's one plus X, if you like. Now, what is X? X is nine, one plus nine. So I need nine oxygens to come from here. Well, to make nine from O2, I need to times that by 4.5. Right, so 4.5, and that is now fully balanced. Right, so you've got to be really careful about that. Right, lastly, other reactions of alcohols. Alcohols are oxidized in air to produce carboxylic acids, right? They're actually oxidized by the oxygen in air, and they will make carboxylic acids. There is a separate video on that, um, so don't worry too much if you don't know what carboxylic, carboxylic acid is. Uh, alcohols react with those, though, right? They react with carboxylic acids to produce esters. That is also covered in the separate video, okay? You just need to be aware of it. Alcohols react with sodium to produce a salt plus hydrogen gas, just like acids do, right? Alcohols actually, in reality, are extremely weak acids, okay? Extremely weak to the point where you wouldn't even notice that they're acids. But they react with sodium to produce... Uh, salt and hydrogen gas just like an acid would and then finally they dissolve in um, in water and that's that sounds like basic but it's actually not most organic molecules do not dissolve in water uh, alcohols actually do right the reason for that is they can form hydrogen bonds from their OH group that OH group which other uh, compounds don't have allows them to form hydrogen bonds with water and so they can dissolve in water okay and it produces a solution of ph7 remember i said they're extremely weakly acidic which means really they don't affect the ph and so the ph is around about ph7 okay so i hope that made sense i'm going to stop there uh, if you do have any questions please feel free to post them in the box or send me a direct email but as usual please do like and subscribe because it really does help me out and of course i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video